Good morning, grade 4, grade 5, and grade 6 learners. How are you today, class? Have you eaten your breakfast? Okay, that's good, because today we will have a great learning adventure. By the way, I am Teacher Crystal, your teacher for today. So before we start, please stand up for our prayer. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, I'm Father of all, I thank you for today. Thank you for uh, the ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, our personal Savior. Amen. Good morning, learners. So, before you take your seats, let's uh, sing first, I'm Alive, Alert, Awake, Enthusiastic. Are you familiar with that song? Are you excited? Okay. So, let's start. I'm Alive, Alert, Awake, Enthusiastic. I'm Alive, Alert, Awake, Enthusiastic. I'm Alive, Alert, Awake. I'm Awake, Alert, Alive. I'm Alive, Alert, Awake, Enthusiastic. Okay, let's do it one more time. But this time, uh, it's a little bit faster, okay? I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake. I'm awake, alert, alive. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Very good. So, um, before you take your seats, please uh, pick up some pieces of papers under your chairs and then, okay, all right? And then arrange your tables and chairs. Make it sure it's all aligned, okay? Are you done? Okay, you may now take your seats. Okay, class, um, if I say, Grade four, you will say care. Again, care. And then if I'll say grade five, you will say happy. Again, happy. And then if I'll say grade six, you will say safety. Again, uh huh, that's right. So, grade five, happy again. Again, grade five, yes, happy. How about Grade six, yes. Safety again, safety. Grade four, care. That's good. Grade four, grade five, grade six, care, happy, and safety. Okay, I hope everybody enjoy. Now, let's check your attendance. Okay, for grade four learners, just say present. If your name is called, okay? Joyana Panaraag, present. Laura Jane De La Pina, present. Norway Apas, okay? Everybody is present. For grade 5 learners, as I call your name, just raise your right hand and say present. Juana Validor, present. Chantal Uy, present. Geraldine Baktong, okay? Everybody is present. Very good. So for grade 6 learners, just raise your left arm and say present. Chubby Panaraag, present. Jamed Drew, present. Rosemary Galamiton, present. Okay, everybody is present. So let's clap our hands for everyone. Okay, before we proceed, let's first recall our classroom rules. So what are our classroom rules? Yes, Shanta? Yes, you are right. Okay, what is our first classroom rule? Yes, keep quiet. When teacher is talking in front, and do not answer in chorus. Just raise your right hand. Again, what is our first rule? Keep quiet. Second, sit down properly and listen to teacher. Third, participate. So what are our classroom rules? Keep quiet, sit down properly, and participate. Excellent. Now, who can still remember our previous topic? Yes, Joanna? Hmm? Yes, our previous topic is all about applying force to an object. So what happened when we apply force to an object? Yes, exactly. So when force is applied to a stationary object, the object tends to move in the direction in which force is applied. For example, if we push the ball on the floor, the ball will continue its motion in the direction of applied force. Okay, is it clear? 
Okay, so are you now ready to proceed to our new learning adventure? But before that, so before I will read the story, um, let's play first an unscrambled game. Are you ready? Okay, so this game will enhance your vocabulary. Okay, let's start. So number one, unscramble the letters A, M, B, B, O, O, to, to come up a word which means a subfamily of tall tree-like grasses with hard, woody, and hollow seed. You are right. So the answer is bamboo. So number two, and scramble the letters R, A, T, I, V, Y, G to form a word which means the universal force of attraction acting between all matter. What is your answer? Yes, the answer is gravity. Next, number three, and scramble the letters F, E, T, Y, S, A, A, B, -E M, U, S, R, S, E. To come up a word which means a measure taken to increase or ensure safety or protection from danger. So what is your answer? Okay, so if your answer is safety measures, you are right. Okay, let's proceed to number four and scramble the letters M A E U S I R G N O T O L. To come up a word which means a device to measure a physical quantity. Yes, yeah, so if you answer measuring to, you are right. Okay, let's proceed to the last number. And scramble the letter T A N S A D D R T I N U. To come up a word which means a volume that is fixed and cannot be changed. So these are what we usually use to measure things like weight, length, and volume. So what is your answer? Okay, very good. So if you answer standard unit, you are right. So who got the perfect answer? So who got the perfect scores? Okay, very good. Let's clap our hands for everyone. I hope you understand those words because later on we will use it for our discussion. Okay, now I have a story and I want you to listen carefully and understand this story because later I will ask something. Okay, are you ready? Okay, let's start. In preparation for Tutu's school savings month, it's only morning. Tutu had already asked his father how to make a piggy bank out of a bamboo. He wants to save from his pocket money provided by his parents. According to his father, here are the steps in making a piggy bank. Number one, get some bamboo. Step two, cut it according to the size set. Step three, clean and polish it with sandpaper. Step four, make a hole in the top of the bamboo that is the size of a coin. And then the fifth step, varnish and or paint to your liking. So Toto was very happy as he did his piggy bank project. Finally, I have finished my piggy bank and I can say for juice that I have been dreaming of for a long time, said Toto. Okay, so as you can observe from the picture, Toto and his father gathered all the materials needed in making bamboo bank. So they used appropriate measuring tools to get the exact size of his project, which is the bamboo bank. So as a father, so as father cut the bamboo, the other half fell on the ground. Okay, so here are my questions. Number one, based on the picture, what are the materials prepared by Tutu and his father? Yes? Yes, Geraldine? Yes. Excellent. So there's a bamboo, hand saw, meter stick or ruler, and a sand paper, and the varnish or a paint. So how do they measure the bamboo? Anyone? How do they measure the bamboo? Yes, Larvi? Okay, good. So it, yeah, yes, Angelo. Yes, you are right. It can be. So, 
So yes, in making the value bank, we should uh, measure the internode. So we should give at least extra space before the nodes and to the other end of the nodes. Number three. So what do you think are the measuring tools used? So what are those? Okay, who can recall? Anyone? Okay. So they can so they use another stick or a ruler. Okay, so what happened to the other part of the bamboo? So okay, so what happened to the other part of the bamboo? Yes, Javi? Great Good job. So as his father cut the bamboo, the other half fell on the ground. Why? Anyone? What do you think that the bamboo fell on the ground? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely works. So the bamboo fell on the ground because of the gravity. Yes, very good. Yes, very good. So all of this has something to do with our lesson for today. All right, grade 5 and grade 6 learners, let's have an activity. Are you ready? Very good. For grade 5 learners, I want you to go to your group that we created last meeting and we have three groups. For the first group, you need to measure the things around you using ruler. For group 2, you need to measure the bookshelf using meter stick. And for group 3, you need to measure the height of your groupmates using tape measure. Put your measurements in a piece of paper. Do you have any questions about the activity? Alright, no more questions. So you may now proceed to your groupmates and start the activity. For grade 6 learners, are you ready? Alright, what you need to do, grade 6, is that you need to go to your groupmates that we also created last meeting and then prepare the materials that I assigned you to bring. For group 1, you are the fast group. What you need to do is throw the objects into the air and then observe what will happen to the object. Put your observation in a manila paper. For group 2, you are the slow group. What you need to do is that tie the objects with a string and then cut the string and then observe what will happen to the object. Put your observation in a manila paper using these guided questions. Do you have any questions about the activity, grade 6 learners? Alright, no more questions. Now you may proceed to your groupmates and start the activity. Alright, grade 4 learners, are you ready to learn? That is great. Today, we will talk about safety measure in proper handling of materials. Now, why do we need to learn this one class? That's correct. We need to learn this one to avoid any accidents, not only for us, but also for the people that surrounds us. Now, everything around us class is made of matter. Most of these substances are useful and some are harmful if not used properly. It can cause accidents like poisoning, burn and irritation, cuts and even death. Now we can avoid this accidents class by following safety measures. And today, I will show you some of these safety measures. First, we have here, wash your hands. We need to wash our hands at least 60 seconds before and after handling chemicals. Why? Yes, that's correct. We need to wash our hands because chemicals can burn and irritate our skin. Next, keep away from flammable materials. Now, why do we need to do that class? Excellent, because flammable materials can cause fire. That's why we need also to store it properly. Next, we have here store chemicals in a cool dry place now can you name some of chemicals you see in your home 
That's great. You have pesticides. What else? You have air freshener. What else? You have hair sprayer. Now, this chemicals class may explode if exposed to fire. That's why we use to we need to store it properly. Now, next we have here used organic materials. Now, what are some of organic materials that you know? That's correct. Compost, fertilizer is an example of organic materials and it is made of scrap foods. And it is the best alternative to commercial fertilizer. Next, we have here, no self-medication. Please remember class. Do not take any medicine without doctor's prescription. And if you take medicine, make sure that there is a supervision of a nurse or a trusted adult. Now, last, be careful. Do not play with sharp and pointed objects like scissors and knife. And if you really need to use this materials class, be sure to ask permit to ask assistance to your parents or any older family members. Now, um, class, what will you do if this accident happens to you? Excellent. Do not panic. What else? That's great. Ask for help if you are in school. Ask for help to a teacher if you are in home. Ask help adults now always remember class what i have mentioned earlier are the things that you need to follow to avoid any accident now in the story of tutus bamboo bank that we have earlier what safety measures did tutu do in making the bamboo bank that's correct. Toto asked help from his father to make the bamboo bank because he needs to use sharp and pointed materials in making it. Now, did the safety measures help Toto? That is correct. It helps Toto because it makes Toto avoid from any accidents now class do we have any questions all right then we we will now have our activity i want you to divide your group divide yourself into two groups and you have to fill this table that i prepared for the first table you have here materials and object second table is proper handling for example in materials and object, we have your insecticides. And in proper handling, how? It, what is the proper handling of insecticides? No? Store in a cold, dry place. How do you understand the activity class? Do you have any questions? All right, now you may proceed to your group and start the activity. Okay, grade five. Listen up. Eyes here in front. Okay. Did you enjoy performing the activity you did earlier? Well, that sounds great. Okay, attention everybody. Group 1, if you are listening, kindly raise your right hand. Okay, very good. Group 2, if you are listening, kindly raise your two hands. Very good. Okay, group 3, if you are listening, kindly wave your hands. Okay, very good. So now, group 1. What measuring tool did you use in measuring the length of 10 small objects? Excellent! You used ruler in measuring the small objects. Okay, what about group 2? What measuring tool did you use in measuring the bookshelf? Brilliant! You used meter stick in measuring the bookshelf. Okay, lastly, group 3, what measuring tool did you use in measuring the height of your group numbers? Excellent! You use tape measure in measuring the height of your 
group members. Because of that, let's give everyone a Janisha clap. One, two, three. Very good, very good. Okay. So the ruler, meter stick, and tape measure are what we call measuring tools. We use those measuring tools especially in measuring the length, the width, and the sizes of different objects. So now, let us learn what is ruler, what is meter stick, what is tape measure, and their standard unit. Let's begin with ruler. Ruler is defined as a tool or a device used to measure the length and draw straight lines. So what is the standard unit for ruler? Okay, everybody, kindly take a look at the photo on the board. Based on the photo, on the upper section, it is in inches. And on the lower section, it is in centimeters. So, the standard unit for ruler is 12 inches long. That is also equivalent to 1 foot and 30 centimeters. So, class, how do we use, uh, use ruler appropriately in terms of measurement? We use ruler in measuring the length or sizes of small objects. Again, small objects only, such as pencil, scissors, crayons, books, piece of paper, or any objects that is shorter than 12 inches or centimeters, 30 centimeters. So now let's proceed to meter stick. Meter stick is often made of plastic or metal used to measure straight objects. So the standard unit for meter stick is 1 meter long, which is also equivalent to 3 rulers, 3 feet, and 36 inches long. Okay, class, when do we use meter stick? We use meter stick to measure straight objects longer than 1 foot or 12 inches, such as bookshelf, door, chair, table, or any objects that is longer than 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Okay, understood? So now let's proceed to tape measure. Tape measure is a type of hand tool and it is usually flexible used to measure the size or distance. Okay, so the standard unit for tape measure is 60 inches which is also equivalent to 5 rulers and 5 feet. So how do we use tape measure appropriately? Tape measure is used in measuring the length or sizes of any objects longer than 1 meter or 36 inches. Usually, in tailoring shops, tape measure is used to measure curved or bent objects, such as measuring your waistline. Measuring the size of a ball. Measuring a cloth. Okay, class. Um, I have a question for you. Um, what measuring tools is appropriate in measuring the length of your index finger? Again, what appropriate measuring tool uh, you are going to use in measuring your index finger? Yes, very good. We are going to use ruler in measuring the length of our index finger. Second question, what measuring tool is appropriate in measuring the length of your TV screen? Anyone? Very good. You are going to use meter stick in measuring the length of your TV screen. Okay, last question. What? A uh, measuring tool is appropriate in measuring your hip, the size of your hip. Very good. You are going to use tape measure in measuring your hip. Okay. Class, did you understand our lesson? Okay, grade 5 class. Let's go back to the story of Tutu. Again, what did Tutu and his father make? Correct. Tutu and his father make a coin bank. 
The coin bank is made up of what? Very good. It is made of bamboo. So class, based on your own understanding about our discussion today, what appropriate measurement tool did Tutu and his father use? Very good. That's correct. If Tutu wants a bamboo bank shorter than 12 inches, then they can use ruler to measure the length. But if Tutu wants his bamboo bank longer than 12 inches, then they can use meter stick. Okay. Class, did you understand our lesson? Did you have any questions? Okay, nine. Grade 5 learners, what have you learned in our discussion today? Amazing! You learned about when and what kind of measuring tools we can use in measuring different objects in order for us to get the proper measurement and to have the perfect, perfect shape of an object or a thing that we wanted to make. Exactly, the ruler. So when can we use the ruler? Yes, we use the ruler for measuring small objects equal to or shorter than 12 inches or 30 centimeters like notebook, crayons, pencil, and eraser. Now, how about the meter stick? When can we use meter stick? Exactly, we use me we use metal stick in measuring straight objects longer than one foot or twelve inches, such as book shield, door, table, and a chair. How about the tape measure? Yes, we use to measure in measuring length or sizes of an object and we also use tape measure in to measure curve or bent objects such as measuring waistline measuring a ball or measuring a clock so just like tutu and his father they are using measuring tool in making their bamboo bank to make it perfect that's right. Now learners, to test our knowledge in our lesson for today, let's have a quiz. For grade 5, you will have test 1 and test 2. For test 1, it is multiple choice. Encircle the correct answer. For each answer, you will have 2 points. So number 1, Anna wants to measure the length of her notebook. What measuring tool should she use? Is it letter A, ruler? Letter B, meter stick? Or letter C, tape measure? Number 2. Diane want to measure the length and the width of their television. What appropriate measuring tool should she use? Is it letter A, ruler? Letter B, meter stick? Or letter C, tape measure? Number three, Elsa used her ruler in measuring her cell phone. And Anna used blank in measuring the table. Is it letter A, ruler? Letter B, meter stick? Or letter C, tape measure? Number four, Cinderella's birthday is near and she planned to tailor her own dress. What measuring tool is appropriate? Is it letter A, ruler? Letter B, meter stick? Or letter C, tape measure? Number five. Christy's hair is long and she decided to cut her hair for about five centimeter. What appropriate measuring tool should she use? Is it letter A, ruler? Letter B, meter stick? Or letter C, tape measure. And test 2, identification. Identify and write the answer on your paper. Answer only. Number 1, 
what is the standard unit of ruler in inches? Number two, what is the standard unit of meter stick in meter? Number three, what is the standard unit of tape measure in inches? Number four, it is used to measure length of small objects. And then number five, it is the use of, to measure the straight object longer than 12 inches. Now learners, I will give you 10 minutes to answer the following question. In the count of three, you will now answering the question. Now, in three, two, one, go! Five minutes left. One minute left. In three, two, one, ball pens up. Very good. Now learners, pass your paper in front. Now grade six learners, from the activity, what happened to the objects or the coin? Yes, you're right. The object will fall. Now, to what direction did the objects fall? Bravo! The object goes to the direction downward. So, what do you call to this kind of movement? Absolutely! It is the gravitational movement. So, gravitational movement is a form of passive movement resulting from the accelerating force exerted by the gravitational field of the Earth. So how does gravity affect the movement of an object? Yes, correct! So, when objects fall to the ground, gravity causes them to accelerate. So, the word accelerate is a change in velocity in turn. Now, the faster the velocity is, the longer the object will fall. So on that activity, what do you call to the force that pulls the object downwards? No one? Okay, so the force that pulls the coin downward is what we call the gravity. So, gravity is a force that pulls the objects towards the ground. So without the force of the gravity, there is no life, no water, no air, and there is no animals. Because... Everything or anything will be floating on, out on earth is a form of gravity. Now, in a bamboo bank, gravity occurs when you put the coin inside the bank. This. But coins and bills have different gravity because coin is heavier than the bills. That's why coin has a faster gravitation, gravity or gravitational force. So, when the massive the object is, the faster the gravitational force is. Observe when I drop the coin and the bills. Do you observe that coin has a faster force when I drop it than the bills? So, who among you here knows about Isaac Newton? Okay, no one? Is there anyone? Okay, so Isaac Newton is the first English scientist who discovers the principles of gravity. According to him, anything thrown up falls down because of the gravity that pulls it. Now, what is gravitational force? So, gravitational force is the speed of the object falling to the ground. So, the massive the object is, the faster the gravitational force is. Now, Grade 6 learners, what have you learned in our discussion today? Great, you learned about the gravity. What is gravity again? Grade 6 learners. Great, gravity is a force that pulls the objects towards the ground. And when can we say that the objects are faster going back to the ground? Yes, the greater the mass or the heavier the object is, this is the faster 
they fall. And if the lesser the mass or the lighter the weight the object is, the slowest they fall. So, according to Isaac Newton, that what comes up come, must comes down. So, whatever you're going through, through the objects, it, it will always go into the ground. So, grade 6 learners, why is gravity is important? Yes, exactly. Gravity is important because if there's no gravity, there's no life, no people, no animals, no, no water, and no plants, and, and any objects on earth. Because anything and everything will floating out in the space. So that is why gravity is very important. So did you understand class? Our lesson for today? Great! Okay, grade 6 learners, are you ready for our short quiz? Alright, so now I want you to get a one-fourth sheet of paper and your ball pen. I will give you one minute to prepare. Alright, are your ball pens and paper ready? Can you raise your ball pen? Alright, so I want you to write your name, your section, as well as your grade level. You are going to answer the following questions directly. Write the correct answer. Write the correct letter only. Understood? Okay. So now let's start. Number one. Why gravity is important? A. Gravity keeps us on Earth. B. It helps us jump higher. C. It is property of all matter. D. It keeps us from falling into space. Are you done? Number two. Where is the gravitational force directed when you are holding a ball? A. Upward. B. Downward. C. Into the glass. D. Away from the glass. Eyes on your papers only. Alright. Number three. What force makes the objects fall down? A. Kinetic energy. B. Gravitational force. C. Potential energy. D. Force. Are you done? Number four. It is the force that pull the objects toward the ground. A. Gravitational force. B. Gravitational movement. C. Gravity. D. Movement. Are you done? Alright. Now let's proceed to the last question. It is the English scientist who discovered the principles of gravity. A. Albert Einstein. B. Steve Jobs. C. Maslow. D. Isaac Newton. Alright. Are you done answering? Okay, time is up. Can you pass all your papers in a count of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, congratulations grade 6 learners. You really did a good job today. And because of that, let's give everyone a Janisha clap. 1, 2, 3. Very good, very good. All right, grade four learners, are you done with your activity? Very good. Now, I want you to choose one member of the group to present your activity in front. Very good, learners. You have done great in your activity. Grade four learners, what have you learned? Great. You learn about the proper use and handling of materials. Now, why we need to have the proper use and handling of materials? Yes, to avoid accident. Okay, grade four learners, are you ready for our short quiz? If yes, say aye aye teacher. All right, so now I want you to get one half crosswise and ball pen. I will give you one minute to prepare. Okay, are your paper and ball pen ready? 
Can you raise your ball pen up? All right. So only your ball pen and paper should be found on your armchair. Understood? Okay. So I want you to answer this. List down at least five safety measures that can be observed in making a bamboo bank. I will give you five minutes to answer. And after that, you are going to submit all your papers. Understood? All right. So you may now start answering. Okay, grade four, time is up. Kindly pass all your papers in a count of five, four, three, two, one. Okay, congratulations. Grade four learners, you did a great job today. Let's give everyone a Tunisia clap. One, two, three, very good, very good. Okay, uh, grade four, grade five, and grade six. Thank you for participating in our class discussion. I hope you have learned something important today. So everybody, let us all stand for our closing prayer. Let us make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the learnings that we have learned today. Keep us uh, safe always, and keep us away from danger. This is all we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, class, goodbye, and see you next meeting.